we've got a fully machined LS2 block here and we want to show you the processes required to bring it to this level. This is ready for assembly. We've got rings installed. The block has been line honed in the mains. It's been power honed in the bores, deck to square. We've all heard those terms, but we really, many customers ring us and they just aren't totally aware of why we do certain things and how they're done. Let's go to the shop and we'll show you. The first step in restoring any cylinder block is to take the main bearing caps. This is a main bearing cap off a Holden V8. Trim the caps. They have to be reduced on the flat. That's done in this machine. It's a little grinding machine. What you're attempting to do is to reduce the bore, the size of the main bearing tunnel. This is installing the cap in a cap grinding machine. He will, he'll be grinding the parting faces to reduce the bore diameter. Izzy's picking up the torque wrench. He's verifying that the torque is correct. He's installed all the ground caps on the cylinder block. He'll now measure the undersize of the main bearing bores. We generally start with about four or five thou under the final factory tolerance we're looking for. And the final step, as you'll see him do, he'll put uh, the Sunnen honing mandrel through the mains and begin honing the bores back to the size he needs. And he'll constantly hone pull the hone back out and come back and measure as he approaches finished size. He's using um, a special type of lubricating oil during the honing process. And he comes back to the size we need. Then we've got perfectly restored main bearing tunnels. They're round, they're on size and they're all in line and straight. That's absolutely critical to any engine. And it's the basis of every other machine work process we undertake. You can see here Izzy's finished the process of honing to size. He's removed one of the main bearing caps so we can see actually the surface finish. You can see that it's got a cross hatch. In other words, it looks like a, a, a cylinder block bore that's been honed. That surface finish is also extremely important for two reasons. It actually increases the surface area of the metal. It holds the bearing in place therefore more tightly and it helps in dissipating heat into the coolant. The next step in the block machining process is the boring of cylinder holes to the next oversize. 30 thou, 40 thou, whatever the piston size may be. You'll see the boring bar is aligned over the top and it starts cutting the bore. Notice the block is installed on a 90 degree fixture referenced of the main bearing bores we just restored. That's very important. Therefore the finished holes, the bores, will be perfectly 90 degrees perpendicular to the main bearing tunnel. As I said before, every process on the block is referenced off the newly restored mains. And this is the first step. That's it, we'll go to the home next. We've bored the cylinders and now we need to find final hone the bores. You'll see this is uh, an LS Chevy block. It's not the same block, but one of the reasons for showing this is that the engine we'll be assembling is exactly one of these. You'll notice we have a, an aluminium torque plate fitted to the top of the decks with a head gasket that's going to be used during assembly. This is to simulate the stresses created by the cylinder head being fitted. 
believe it or not, this does create a distortion in the cylinder bores. And the reason for using the torque plate while finish honing is so that the bores are dead round and straight with the cylinder head attached. In other words, as a running unit. Notice also that we have the mains fully torqued up. Our line honed, restored mains are torqued up and our honing is once again referenced from the mains 90 degrees perpendicular to those mains. Now, as it's approaching finished size, Shane will pull the honing stone out of the bore and do a final measurement to ensure the sizing is correct. He'll use a dial bore gauge to confirm the size. If it's not finished, he'll continue. This process is very important. We need a perfect crosshatch finish, as you saw. You can see that in the top of the deck plate. And the, you know, the block needs to have the same finish for the piston rings to seal up instantly and very well. That's important. We've come back to the engine assembly room. Now, we've taken the LS cylinder block. We've cleaned it after the honing process. Shane is taking, uh, he's installed the crankshaft incidentally, just in a couple of main bearings. We had him install a rod piston assembly. The rod had no, uh, the rod has no cap on it obviously, so it's just sitting on the rod journal with uh, the rod bearing that'll be used. No rings attached to the pistons, so it's easy for the rod assembly to go up and down. He'll just rotate the crank by hand and what we're doing now is we're measuring the deck height of the piston. How far below or above the deck the piston is sitting at top dead centre. He's using a dial indicator coming off the deck surface. He's rocking the piston to average it out and we can see what the final deck height is. Now this is very important from the perspective of determining a compression ratio, final compression ratio that we've decided to use for this particular combination. This is one of the ways to achieve it. We will determine where we need this particular piston to sit to provide us with the compression ratio we need. Now the other factors that are relevant, the head gasket thickness, the combustion chamber volume in the cylinder heads we'll use because the combustion chamber is the whole unit. It's the piston and the dish or a flat valve relief, the thickness of the head gasket and the combustion chamber in the cylinder head which determines what the final compression ratio will be. Now that he's mocked it and where was it sitting? It's about 14 down. For example, if we decide, oh, you know, we need it to be sitting at zero. What we're going to do is we're going to take the block back out into the workshop, we'll take the crank back out, and we'll machine the decks, 14 thou, 5 thou, 10 thou, whatever we need. The other reason for doing this is to equalise both decks. Now the LS motors, the factory has machined those very well, and we find those blocks coming from the factory are pretty square. In other words, the deck height on each bank is the same as the deck height on the other within a thou or two. So they're very good. But your traditional earlier style engines, particularly your Holden V8s, the Chev small block and some of the Ford V8s, they're woeful. You know, you may find a block that not only has different deck heights from the factory, but they're even sloping. So your deck heights vary even on the one bank. This is important to correct. And at the same time, we're optimising the deck height to give us the compression ratio we want. So what we'll do is we'll get out back into the workshop, take the block and make it dirty again, and we'll deck it. We're going to be using a Holden V8 to illustrate that, but you know, we're taking whatever we've got to illustrate things. Uh, but the process is the same, regardless of the type of engine we're using. 
So we'll see you back out in the shop. We have a Holden V8 block in this instance loaded into our surface grinder milling machine. The block is sitting on the same type of 90 degree fixture referencing through the main tunnel once again. Remember, we're referencing through our fully restored main tunnel and the block is sitting each deck at 90 degrees. Now, Shane is measuring off a ground parallel bar going through the torqued up mains determining what our deck height requirements are. For example, as you saw previously, we measured the piston height. Now, for example, if we need to remove 5 thou, 10 thou or 15 thou off this deck, he's determining where we're at, he'll zero it, and then he'll start cutting. He'll do the same to both decks. Once one is done, he'll remove the block, swing it around, put it back on the same fixture, do the measurement, see the difference, and then cut what he needs to bring both of them back to the zero point, which is what our requirement is. In this way, the block becomes perfectly square. The block has perfectly straight round main tunnels. The decks need to be exactly parallel to those main tunnels, and that's the process we're doing here. As well as that, we're sitting the piston, by the action of decking the block, we're sitting the piston relative to the finished deck where we need it to achieve the compression ratio. And you have to keep in mind, this ensures that both banks, in fact, all holes, all bores, have the same compression ratio. That's very, very important. So I'll let him run through the quickly just and you'll see him surfacing the actual deck. Shane's taking a snap measurement to see how much he's taken off. He's got a pretty good idea from experience, of course, as to how much he's taken off, but he's just showing you, he's illustrating the point. And he's verifying that the decks, the deck heights will be even all the way along. The machine is a very precise machine and the fixture is an extremely precise fixture. So the results are a no-brainer, actually.